glory to God. Um, the theme for today, uh, we decided to do it like it was an Easter theme, but in my heart, I wanted to talk about an Old Testament where for some of you guys will think it has nothing to do with Jesus, but for me, it has everything to do with Jesus. Um, I'm going to read from Joshua 6. 6, verse 6. I'm sure most of you guys know this story. It's about the walls of Jericho. But I'm going to read it to you anyways, and you guys could follow. I'm going to read from verse 6 to 10. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let's, let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, encompass the city, and let him that his arm pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the re reward came after the ark. And the priests going on and blowing the trumpets and Joshua had commanded the people saying, ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of that mouth until the day I bid you about, then shall you shout. The last verse, it says, you shall not shout, make a noise for, for he didn't say how many days. He said, march around Jericho until I tell you to shout. He was given blind direct, they were given blind directions, the children of Israel, to walk around Jericho and not shout or make any noise or anything for that matter. All they were was to obey, obey the voice of Joshua, for they knew he was like Moses, and the prophet of God spoke through, he was a prophet of God. So they w marched around Jericho. And sometimes in our life, we come to a moment in our lives where we're told to do something. Maybe as kids, we're told to pray to God, and we don't even have a relationship with God. We don't know what we're praying to or who we're praying to. All we know is we have to pray to God. And that's the way the children of Israel were. They didn't, they, all their relationship was God, with God was through Joshua and Moses before him was to worship God and to do what he, they were commanded. So they were blindlessly marching around Jericho. Verse 11. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord and the priests going on and blowing the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp, so they did six days. So they did, they did this on the second day and they did this for six days total, marching around Jericho. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So what they did was they marched around Jericho for six days making no noise. They were doing this for six straight days without making any noise. And I think, I don't know if it says this, but I think they, were, they weren't even told how many days to march silently. They just, what Joshua said was, march around Jericho for six days straight silently, in pure silence. And on the seventh day, he finally commanded them, march around Jericho seven times with trumpets blaring, with noise. And then at the final seventh time around, he said, shout for the Lord has given you the city. Finally, on verse 20, 620, so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so the people went up into the city, and every man straight before him, and they took the city. Finally, after marching around seven times around Jericho, the walls finally fell down. The children of Israel uh, once had the one command. They had one command. It was, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Every, even though they felt as though nothing was happening, they marched around once. Joshua shouted, do it again. Marched around twice. Do it again. Three times. Do it again. Four times. Do it again. And so on until the seventh time. He finally said, shout. 
For the Lord has given you the city. Alleluia. There's a song that is very close to me. In my, in my heart, I would like to state the lyrics. It is called Do It Again by Elevation, if you guys have ever heard of it. They go as follows. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. In our life, we may be walking around these walls. But we, you know what? We have this one command. Walk again. Walk again. Get back up. Walk again. Sometimes in our life, we feel down because maybe our prayers are not getting answered. Maybe we keep falling spiritually and keep wondering why. But we are called by the blood of Jesus to keep praying till our knees give out, to keep getting back up every time we fall, to endure to the very end when we will stand before our Lord and we will fall before him and say that we did it with everything we had. And a little part of me feels as though we will be shouting. We won't just come up to the Lord. We will be shouting for our salvation. We, we have our salvation. Just like the children of Israel did when they shouted with glory that the walls finally fell down. Hallelujah. This reminds me of the story in Mark 1, if we turn to it. Mark 140. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. All it says in this passage is, There came a leper. A leper. He doesn't have a name. There was no name given to him. If you look at Matthew's and Luke's recount, there's no name given to the leper. And this made me wonder, why was he just called a leper? Even like, even if it were in a restaurant, we still want to know the waitress's name or someone that's serving us, we want to know their name. Whoever it may be, we, we want to know their name. But this leper was just given the name, the leper. And this made me think, Sometimes in our life, we are known by our issues because we feel like we feel locked down inside and our issue defines us. Our issue is what we, we're named by. And that's what the leper was. The leper, if you look at Leviticus' recount, let's all turn to Leviticus 13. It talks about what lepers are supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do. It has a whole recount. I remember the first time I read Leviticus, it was probably when I was a little kid, and I read it, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> you know, Because, I, I mean, I was known as Jesus, like, he, like, I just knew about the Jesus version of the Bible. But Leviticus, because I was reading about, like, sacrifices and a lot of that stuff, and it was very confusing to me. So if you want, if you want to get, like, spiritual healing, yeah, I, I don't recommend Leviticus as the chat um, passes tree. But, or the ch but Leviticus 13. Leviticus 13, 46 is what kind of struck to me. It says, All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled, he is unclean, he shall dwell alone without the camp, shall his habita habitation be. If you research further, lepers were supposed to stay 50 steps away from anyone. 50 steps. And this leper, he was probably 50 steps away from Jesus at the time Jesus was preaching in the synagogues. And he, every single step, I think about it, every single step that the leper came was probably like a march around Jericho. Every single step probably felt like it was the hardest step of his life. But he just went forward. He probably got halfway to Jesus. And he's like, what am I doing? I have to go back. But no, he, every single step, he said, no, I'm coming to Jesus. No, I'm going to get healed. And he kept walking and walking. And finally, verse 41, and Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him and saith unto him, I, I will, I will have compassion on you, and you will be clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleaned. Sometimes in our life, we are walking to Jesus with issues in our life. We feel like, no, Jesus is not going to cleanse us. But this man, he was supposed to stay 50 steps away from Jesus. He went, and Jesus had compassion on him, and he healed him in that very spot. Hallelujah. And he straightly charged him, for which sent him away. So he sent away the leper, and he said, See, thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded, for a testimony unto him. 
But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter and so much that Jesus could no more openly open the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. So he said, do not say anything. But the man with the leprosy, he was healed. He was filled with compassion. He was healed. And when our, in our lives when we are healed by Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we cannot even contain it. We just shout with glory just like the children of Israel did. We shout because Jesus had cleaned us. We say testimonies of his great power. And in verse 45, and this is why we do that. When he did that, when the man with leprosy, he did that. What kind of strikes me it's, is that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. When Jesus healed him, he could no more openly enter into the city. And I started wondering, Jesus took his place. Jesus took the leper's place. He took the leper's place, and the leper took his place. Just like Jesus did on the cross, he took our place, and he took our place, and he gave his, him us ours. Now, we are called to be like Jesus, to live as Jesus did, because he took our place on the cross, and he died for us. Hallelujah. And I want to finish up, closing up, Mark, Mark 16 to stay on the topic of Easter. After Jesus had risen again, he would met with his disciples. 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He called us after he was risen again. He said, Because I gave you my place, I took, I took my place and I gave it to you. You are to do what I was doing. You are to preach to the whole world and to every nation because your salvation is for you. Hallelujah. And 